in the same scene after kent leaves the sound of flourish is heard and the princess of france and burgundy enter along with glocester and some attendants so glocester has brought france and burgundy to be presented before king lear it is certain that they have not known what has happened previously so lear first addresses the lord of burgundy line number 190 so he addresses burgundy and asks him what dower dowry he requires from lear for cordelia or otherwise whether he will cease his quest of love meaning what does he expect from lear as dowry for cordelia and if it is not given whether he will stop his quest for love there itself so burgundy replies that he does not need anything more than what has been offered earlier so lear clarifies that you can see in uh, around line uh, 195 to 200 when she was dear to us we did hold her so but now her price is fallen so burgundy who has not understood or who has not known what has happened previously is now made known by lear that earlier when cordelia was dear to lear he had promised a certain amount of dowry along with certain uh, property and territory but now he makes it clear that cordelia's price is fallen so as if she is an object okay whose price has fallen due to certain circumstances and lear continues further that if burgundy chooses to still get married to cordelia all that he would receive is lear's displeasure and nothing more so he presents cordelia before burgundy she is there and she is yours okay so burgundy has to make a choice whether cordelia has to be his wife or not if burgundy chooses cordelia to be his wife he gets no dowry or reward uh, other than king lear's displeasure so the choice has to be made right away and burgundy uh, definitely confused he says i know no answer so lear says once again in line uh, 203 onwards will you with those infirmities she owes unfriended new adopted to our hate dowered with our curse and strangered with our oath take her or leave her so the question do you want her or do you leave her she what are the infirmities he mentions she is unfriended she is new adopted to our hate she is dowered with our curse and strangered with our oath i have declared that she is a stranger to me i have declared all that i am going to give her as the inheritance is my curse she now receives only my hate and no love she is unfriended in this situation together with these infirmities burgundy do you take her or leave her so king lear being a very mighty ruler uh, burgundy does not want to be his enemy so burgundy asks his pardon and says election makes not up in such conditions meaning he does not want to get married to cordelia by buying her a uh, father's displeasure instead of all the dowry that had earlier been promised so lear says that it is good that you may leave her because in fact there is no benefit for burgundy in marrying cordelia other than buying the displeasure of king lear so that is how burgundy chooses not to get married to cordelia 
now lear around line 210 turns to the prince of france now france has to make the decision whether he holds on to his love towards cordelia lear mentions or describes cordelia as a wretch whom nature is ashamed almost to acknowledge hers here nature capital n it is personified so lear is ashamed to call cordelia as his daughter as his natural or legitimate daughter and calls her a wretch and presenting this wretch before france he asks whether france would like to take her hand so here we understand a bit about the character of the king of france sorry the prince of france so what we understand is listening to what has been talked to burgundy and now listening to the question of king lear to himself france makes a question because it is strange that all of a sudden lear has disclaimed cordelia as his daughter so he does not know what has happened and wants to know the reason for his sudden displeasure and hatred towards cordelia it is only fair that france should know what has really happened around lines 215 he mentions how king lear had earlier described cordelia to be his best object the argument of his praise the balm of his age the best the dearest so many adjectives should now commit a thing so monstrous to dismantle so many folds of favor what has happened to this angelic girl what crime has she committed so monstrous that all of a sudden all the folds of favor has been dismantled from her and france understands that cordelia must have done some serious offense that such an unnatural amount of hatred has been planted into uh, king lear's mind all of a sudden so it is rightful on the part of a prince or a king to weigh the balance of justice before deeming a person a criminal or not while the father the king lear himself denies cordelia of that justice we can see that this sort of a justice is sought by prince franz so the answer here is made by cordelia so cordelia says what has happened and what is in her mind